Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play The Raven, Legacy of a Master Thief. When last we left off, Patricia had managed to uh, figure out where the secret compartment was in the Baroness's um, cabin. Unfortunately, it is um, heavily locked by a very complicated lock, which can have over 8,000 combinations, which means if we want to brute force it, we won't actually manage it before the end of the game. And as we know, Patricia wasn't in there brute-forcing a lock when Zelna stepped in, so she either figured it out or gave up. And it's more likely she figured it out. So let's ask about the last thing on the list before we carry on. Buonarotti's Adam. Who's that? Buonarotti, um, seems familiar somehow. To me as well, but I don't know why. Hmm, no, I have no idea. I don't know him. Someone must. I'll be going. Don't waste all the hot water. Never. He's gonna waste all the hot water, isn't he? Let's leave the cabin at this point. Hello! You are in fact still here. And you're not going to help me with anything, I wager. Perhaps, um, the violinist might know some of these things. That is a good person to ask. The violinist is in fact gone. That is not helpful at all. I was kind of hoping you might have known some of these. The Baroness will be here though, I think. Indeed. Possibly the last time we'll actually be able to talk to her before she is tragically murdered. So let's the talk to her. The seems to have a reason to celebrate. She's downing one glass of champagne after another. He can't talk to her, really, I don't think. The less I have to do with her, the better. Best if she doesn't even remember that I exist. Although, based on her alcohol consumption, I don't really think I have to worry about that. Yeah, she's probably not going to remember anything of tonight. At all. The captain might know some of these people. He's sweating profusely. Burst capillaries and a sweet odor. I hope the crew doesn't take the captain for a role model, and that they stay sober for the rest of the trip. Let's talk to the captain. Hello. How are you? Hello, Captain DeCanti. Miss Myers, how nice to see you. You look beautiful. We missed you at dinner. I was in my cabin. I, uh, I didn't feel very well. <laughs> oh, I hope you're feeling better. Well, we can ask about a lot of things here. Lovely concert, wasn't it? You only heard the end. It was really wonderful. All the more curious that Lady Westmacott embarrassed Mr. Kreutzer like that, don't you think? I have no idea what got into her. They say she's a difficult person, but this... Maybe it's the privilege of famous people to be a bit strange from time to time. When I was still a young sailor, Enrico Caruso was a passenger on our ship, <laughs> and he... I think she's fascinating. She's achieved so much, and all by herself. Lady Westmacott, oh yes, that's true. The most successful writer in the world. Do you know any more about her? Everything. <laughs> I'm her biggest fan. What do you want to know? Ooh, there's a lot of things we could talk about here. Let's talk about all of them. Where is she from? Who were her parents? Her father was a wealthy British salesman. Her mother died in childbirth. She had an outstanding education, but was a lonely child, they say. Her father was away on business most of the time. I know how she feels. For many years, my father's career was also more important than me. Don't say that, my child. Your father paid for the life you now live. Did Lady Westmacott's father marry again? Yes. A woman 15 years his junior. She didn't really care for the child. She was something of a high society lady. She made the headlines with her antics more often than the family would have liked. Ooh. Well, we are learning a little bit about Lady Westmacott's upbringing. Let's talk about her novels. And her novels. How did she come to be a writer? In interviews, she always mentions her French tutor, 
who encouraged her to write when she was a child. Hmm. After some poems and short stories, she began to write detective novels with great success. The rest is history. The experts are arguing whether she or Shakespeare has sold more books. Although she doesn't receive the same deference. That's true. But her books are much more innovative and extraordinary than people generally give her credit for. Imagine if you were talking to Zellner about this. You'd probably get many of the same kind of responses. But then Zellner is, I think, currently unconscious in the, um, down in the hold. So, yeah, we can't really go talk to him. And what does an elderly lady like her want in Egypt? I couldn't really say. She was there many times with her husband, an archaeologist. He died a long time ago. I heard something about a reception at the Egyptian Museum? Yes, for the eyes of the Sphinx. Or rather, for the eye. But I don't think she'd go to Cairo just for that. She usually stays away from official events. Didn't participate in the literary scene either. Mm. Always stayed as far away as possible from high society. Probably because of her stepmother. That would explain a lot of the reasoning why she doesn't like people like um, the violinist, Kreutzer. So let's talk about the captain himself. Is it true that you're a war hero? Mm-hmm. In two world wars. That tells you how old I must be. <laughs> you're as old as you feel. Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> Aren't you feeling well? You shouldn't burden your pretty little head with the dark thoughts of an old man, my dear. Mm, well, let us burden them, because we shall mention it. If you don't feel well, maybe you should take it easy. I'm afraid if I take it easy, it'll kill me. <laughs> you seem to be a pessimist. No. Fatty liver, asthma, gallstones, jaundice, gout, shingles, hemorrhoids. Varicose veins, circulatory trouble, knee problems, pulmonary embolism, gastritis, migraine, neuralgia, tinnitus, rheumatism, pleurisy, thrombosis, and constipation. Those are what's been diagnosed so far. My body is a curse. Oh, uh, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Forgive an old man. I, I, I didn't mean to shock you. That's a lot of illnesses. That is a lot of illnesses. Remember when uh, Dr. Gebhardt said he would probably spend most of his time on the ship treating Captain De Conti's various ailments? That is why. That is why. You're still the captain of this beautiful ship. Yep. Duh. They couldn't just get rid of me, so they stuck me somewhere where I can't make trouble anymore. Don't say that. This ship runs fine without me. The crew knows what to do. They don't need me. They... They don't want me. Captain! It's... I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm burdening you with all of this. Forgive me, eh? I'd like to rest for a while. Soon enough, it'll be time to head back to the call face. Eh? <laughs> well, we could just talk to him again. Captain De Conti? Yes? That was quite a rest. I want to rest for a little bit. Two seconds later, you're all rested up and ready to go to answer questions about things you probably don't know. But we'll try anyway. Do you know Nefertiti? Is she... a Greek queen? No. She... Oh, never mind. <laughs> That's a no, then. Do you know Albrecht Dura? Yes. An artist. Not bad. But... He has his weaknesses as well. For example? For one, he wasn't Italian. That's a pity. You can say that again. <laughs> At least he lived in Italy for a while. What else can you tell me about him? I once overheard an argument on board between a German and a Spaniard about who elevated the woodcut to an art form, mm -hmm. Albrecht Dürer or Alberto Durero. Eventually, they realized they were talking about the same man! Ha! Albrecht Dura is called Alberto Durero in Spain? That's right! Don't ask me why! 
That's a good piece of information to know. We could ask that to other people. Because we need to basically figure out animals linked to these various um, artists. Buena Rati. That sounds Italian, doesn't it? Ha! You can say that again. Is it then? Buona Rotti is the name of the greatest artist of all time. Michelangelo Buona Rotti. Ah. Who most people only know by his first name. Just imagine. One man, an Italian, achieves perfection in all three movements of graphic arts. Mm. His David is the most famous statue in the world. As an architect, he was a genius. He built parts of St. Peter's Basilica. And as a painter, Michelangelo painted the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. The creation of Adam. The spark of life leaps from God to Adam. One of the most famous paintings in the world. Yes, it is. The Sistine Chapel, Apostolic Palace, Vatican City. I don't know any animals associated with them. Animals? Oh, it's a game I used to play. My father posed me a riddle, and I have to guess an animal. Hmm. And Buona Rotis Adam was the hint? Hmm. Maybe he meant Rome. According to legend, the founders of the city, Romulus and Remus, were raised by a she wolf. Hmm. No, that's too vague. Does Vatican City have an animal on its coat of arms? No. And the Pope? Every Pope has his own emblem. But the new one doesn't have an animal. You don't seem to like the new Pope. It's too early to say. But who's fit to hold the candle to John the 23rd? Il Papa Buono, as we used to call him. The good Pope. He just died recently. What was his heraldic animal? He was a lion. And so was his heraldic animal. For a Catholic, Buenarotti's Adam could be a mnemonic for the lion. Pope John XXIII was elected in the Sistine Chapel like every other pope. A work of art hints at a coat of arms with a lion on it. Hmm. Maybe. I'll make a note of lion. I'm gonna go have a look around. All right. Sounds like we have a hint there. Maybe Westmacott will have some more hints for us, though I get the feeling she might not actually tell us anything. Lady Westmacott? Hello. Yes. She might not want to answer any of these questions. Here we go. It must be exciting to meet all the world's famous and powerful people. I stay away as far as possible from high society. Too shallow. Too boring. But some of them must be exciting. Have you ever met Picasso? <laughs> they told him he's a genius so often that he actually started to believe it himself. But his paintings are impressive. Uh, Guernica, for example. Well, it certainly is big. I have to give him that. Didn't he have to flee from Spain? Yes, from the fascists, but not just him. Many of his paintings as well. If I remember correctly, Guernica is currently on display in the Museum of Modern Art in New York. He bequeathed it to a future Spanish Republic. And until then it stays in New York? Yes. It's been there for years now. Now if you remember, there is a picture in the main corridor just outside this room about this ship going to New York. Might be a clue that we can look at. Have you ever been to New York? For the love of God, what would I do there? We have the original York in England. That's quite enough for me. So, you don't know the heraldic animal of New York? No. Probably an eagle. It's all eagles over there. Probably isn't an eagle, actually. We could ask about, uh, this guy. She might not tell us. Are you? interested in art? Not really. I'm more interested in real life, in people. So, you don't know Albrecht Dürer? Uh, just because I'm not interested in art doesn't mean that I'm ignorant. What can you tell me about him? Books, my dear, books. In them, you'll find the answers to all your questions, even the most foolish ones. I bet you don't know anything about him and you just want to cover it up. 
Ah, you want to appeal to my honor. <laughs> Too obvious, I'm afraid. There is actually a hint in what she has said about how to solve that one. We have seen some books about art before on the ship. We'll have to go check them again. This is the one that, considering the fact that Lady Westmacott was so um, involved in the archaeology in Egypt, is one we're probably not going to get any answer for at all. I hear you're well-versed in Egyptian history, Lady Westmacott. Can you tell me anything about Nefertiti? A queen. The main wife of Akhenaten. Are there any famous works of art depicting her? Oh yes, the bust of Nefertiti. One of the most beautiful ancient Egyptian sculptures. I saw it years ago in London. So the bust is located in England? No, it was discovered in 1912 in Tel El Amarna by a German archaeologist and brought to Germany. I'm not sure where it is today. Ask the Baroness. She's the expert on museums here. May I take my leave? You may. Oh, we might actually have... Well, actually, we can't talk to uh, the Baroness. It's not going to let me. But off we go. There are some things that we can look at. The lion is indeed an option. Now, if we look at the poster, do you remember the poster that welcomed the Lydia to New York? There might be an animal on that. Okay. The coat of arms of New York City is on the poster. There's the obligatory eagle. That can't be it, since there's no eagle on the lock. But look here. How cute. There are two beavers posing on the New York City emblem. Guernica equals New York equals beaver. I just need one more animal. You do? And? We're about to go and figure that out. We have lions, we have beavers, and now we're going to look in a book, as we were told to do so. For in books lies the answers to all of your questions. In this case it's magazines, but hey, close enough, eh? Close enough. Hmm, maybe the art magazine will help me with the symbols. Maybe. Indeed. An article about the different works of art and how they survived the Second World War. And there's also a picture of the bust of Nefertiti. Handy. The unique Egyptian work of art was... 1913. Hmm. Hmm. Permission to export to Germany. Second World War. Safe at the Reich Bank. Then a bunker. And then a salt mine. Prevented from shipping the bus to the United States back in Berlin since 1956. Very glad, blah, blah, blah. Soon in the Egyptian Museum of Berlin and hopefully someday in a reunified Berlin on the museum island. Okay, so the bust of Nefertiti is located in Berlin. And which animal is on the city's coat of arms? The Berlin Bear. That's it! Three animals are all I need. I can guess the fourth. But I could try to find the fourth symbol anyway, just to be sure. That is the uh, clue to be like, if you can find the fourth animal, then maybe you can get even more points. The doctor is upstairs. He probably locked the door. And I bet he did. Yep. Yes. Well, there's not much we can do there. The bust of Nefertiti is in Berlin. Berlin Bear. That works. Right. So we have one more animal to potentially find. Alternatively, we can just go and unlock it anyway. And when we come back, folks, hopefully we'll go and swap those gems around, and then all will be well. And then, as we know from after the events, uh, Patricia here mostly spent her time... Uh, Relaxing, as she said she would after she'd solved all this. All the stuff that she did that we had no idea until we got to this point. So, I'll catch you next time, folks. See you then. Later.